Hey YouTube, how's it going? This is Gamester81. Today's show, we're going to take a closer look at the Generation Next console. It's a very interesting clone system. It plays both Nintendo and Famicom games. It came out in 2005. We're going to take a closer look at the system itself, some of the pros. There's definitely some cons as well. Uh, talk about some of the accessories that were available with it, like this really cool kind of a Nest Advantage clone, which is really cool wireless. And we're going to show some gameplay, so show you some capabilities. As far as my intro song is concerned, I know a lot of Germans have had issues recently viewing some of my videos because of my intro song. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. I plan on tweaking the song and temporarily I'll have it down so you can view it and I'll figure it out. So I'm on it. So thanks for watching guys and let's take a closer look. I'm going to show you what you get with the original package for the Messiah. You get the system itself. You get the wired controller. I'll, show, I'll explain a little bit more about this in, system here in a minute. I'm going to show you the packaging. It's kind of an interesting packaging. This thing slides open. Messiah is actually a company out, was out of California, but the system itself was made and manufactured in China. This thing opens up. You get a really cool instruction manual. It looks like a Nintendo cartridge. And the instructions are laid out really cool, almost like a cartoon or a comic book. I'll show you what I mean. So little animations and stuff like that, really cool. It shows you also they had wireless Super Nintendo controllers were available as well, which came in like a lunchbox. Uh, pretty cool. Those are pretty rare nowadays. Okay, so it shows you how to the system. Also comes with, which is really cool, a digital press collector's guide. And it shows you pretty much a list of all the Nintendo games available. And there's little check boxes like that. And you can check them off so you can collect. Okay, digital press is actually a really cool uh, website. And it's a store out east coast that sells some retro stuff as well. Okay, let's take a closer look at the system itself. Here's a closer look at the system itself. You got a really nice Generation Next logo here. And what the system does, it plays both Nintendo games, which plug in here, and Famicom games, which plug in here. Famicom games actually run off six pins, and Nintendo games run off 72. But other than that, they're the same kind of RAM, same everything else, okay? Uh, so it's cool, you can actually play any Japanese games or North American games. Uh, I believe it is compatible with European games as well. PAL games, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm, I wanna say this, okay? Uh, the nice thing about it is it's, it's very sleek in design. So let me compare the size to like a normal Nintendo. Obviously it's got a very retro feel to it. it it's significantly smaller. Okay, just kind of show you the size comparison. A lot more weight, less weight than the Nintendo was. And actually it feels like the same plastic. So it's actually very sturdy built and well built. The controller, it comes with one controller. But what's nice is the controller ports are compatible with any other Nintendo controller or accessory. So you can put the zapper gun in there. So that's huge. Uh, the Nintendo games would plug in the front like so. And one thing I don't like about this system, I'll show you. They snap in, and but one thing to get the Nintendo games out, you got to use a lot of force to get it out. Uh, for some reason, it likes to, to, to hold on to the Nintendo games. The Famicom games would actually plug in on the very top. This is an 82 in one game. And it snaps in quite a bit easier for the Famicom games. There's no switch to go from back to forth, so in order to play one game, you have to take the other one out. If you have both games plugged in, you're getting a black screen. Okay, let's take a close look at the system on the side here. This is your Wi Fi. Uh, this basically allows you to use wireless controllers that were built, made by Messiah as well. Uh, if it's on, this thing will light up, and I'll show you the wireless controllers here in a minute. Um, on the top, you got your start button right here, your reset. There's a red button that, or red light that's going to light up when the power is on. On the back, you basically got your power adapter, which the AC adapter on this thing is very, very small. And you also got your uh, stereo out. Looks you got all three AV outs. Now, the games, as you know, Nintendo games are not built for stereo, so it's kind of pseudo stereo. It's still mono for the most part, okay? Unless you develop a new Nintendo game that could be available in stereo. But, you know, Nintendo was not built for stereo initially, okay? Uh, as, as far as everything else, it, it's not a bad design. Uh, it is compatible with 97% of the Nintendo games out there. There are about 21 out of the 700 games uh, out there, 700 plus games, that are not compatible, including Castlevania 3. That's just the nature of being a clone. It, it may, you know, most clones are not compatible with every single game, just to let you know. But most of the popular games, it's going to work for. We're going to check out some gameplay here later. But I really like the sleek design. Let me show you the controller. This is really cool. This is the controller that was, uh, came along with it. This thing lights up when it's on, which is cool. It's the Messiah logo. And you got your B button, your A button. Looks a lot like kind of a, an original Nintendo controller. A lot more sleek. It's almost like a Nintendo controller meets a Super Nintendo controller. You got the turbo button here, which allows you to jump higher, shoot faster. Slow button just 
pauses it, keeps pausing it, and slows down the game. This is a touch technology, so you don't have to push it, you just touch it. It's kind of, I don't know how it works. Maybe the heat of your finger. This is your directional pad. This is your select and your start. It's kind of weird to have that there. Notice the bumper buttons here. That's your B button. This is your A button. So you can use these as, those as well. And on the back, it's just kind of rounded to fit your hand. Okay? Let's check out some of the other controllers available for the system. There are two wireless controllers available for the system. Uh, I own two of these. This is the actual uh, wireless controller, and it comes in a packet too. I'm going to show you one of them here. And then you got this awesome Generation Next wireless arcade stick. Okay? Basically how it works, it runs, if this, these things open up, and it runs off AAA batteries, two of them. The hours on these batteries are about 40 plus hours is what they say, so it's pretty good. Here's the on-off switch, so you can switch it on. And you notice the light will switch power up, see how the light is on. Uh, this is your select, your start, these are all touch like the other ones. This is your turbo, your slow, this is all touch as well. Uh, your B button, your A button. Notice the directional pad here is more like an analog stick, although uh, it's still directional because like most games for Nintendo are directional, so it's kind of tricky to get used to, but it feels really good to the thumb. It can actually can feel when you're pushing up, and it's pretty responsive overall. Okay, very cool. It's actually bigger than the original controller. Let me show you a size comparison. The other side controller is actually significantly better, bigger. It doesn't come with the bumper buttons either, but overall, this is the one I definitely use to play with the system, and it's very responsive. Okay, overall. Then you get this wireless arcade stick. This thing's a beast. It runs off four AA batteries. And again, you get about 40 hours of, of gameplay with this thing. You get your B button, your A button. These are your turbo buttons right here. And you can get, you can adjust your turbo settings right here. So how far you jump, whatever, how high, how fast you fire. These things don't tend to work very well, to be honest with you. I just turn the turbo off. It's too confusing. This is your slow setting. It's going to keep pausing it, which is kind of annoying. Your start, your select, and your channel. Uh, thing about the, both these wireless controllers are you have four channels, so you can play up to four players or use four controllers at the same time. On the wireless one here, if you look on the very bottom, this is where your channel select is, okay? And then on this, this is where your channel select is. This thing is beyond heavy, so you're going to have to play it on the table or on your lap or one of the two, but this is your, your stick as well. So it feels like a fighting stick. It's very responsive as well. They did a great job meshing kind of retro and modern together. Let's check out some game gameplay, guys. We're going to look at a game that a lot of us are fond of. I am definitely fond of this game. Probably one of my favorite games for the Nintendo Entertainment System. This is Super Mario Bros. 3. Overall, I'll, I'll be honest with you guys, this game plays fairly well on the Generation X. I'm pushing the slow button, and that's what happened. It keeps pausing. Some games it works better than others. This game, it doesn't work very well at all. So my advice is don't use the slow button. I'll show you later what the turbo button does. This game, I remember first seeing on... Actually, the movie The Wizard with Fresh Average kind of way back in the day, and I was blown away at the graphics of this game. And you know, you can get the feather turn into raccoon, which I never really got the correlation. But overall, as far as sound goes, it's not terrible. Uh, you know, there are some games definitely that play on the Generation Next that sound isn't as quite as good as the original. But the colors overall, you know, I don't really don't notice anything. Maybe you guys notice a huge difference between this and the original, but. Nothing that really stands out where you say, wow, that's a huge difference. Definitely, I play a lot of clone games that the sound and, and colors are, are way off. You can see that when I push the turbo button, see how I kind of jump a little shorter? For some reason, this game, watch this non-turbo, I jump higher, and then I trip. It's weird, but you can see the difference in how I jump in turbo and stuff. But overall, uh, it must have game, and it plays fairly well for the generation next. Let's look at a Famicom game. Here's a Famicom game plugged in. This is Double Dragon 2. I love the Double Dragon series for sure. <laughs> Definitely love the arcades. This game uh, plays fairly well as well. I mean, Famicom games work great. As I mentioned earlier in my video, uh, the Famicom is capable, uh, is compatible with the Famicom disc system, which is great. And that's, really what I, that's what I used to play with it on. Uh, and it works great with the Famicom disc game. So if, you're, if you don't necessarily have a Famicom system and you want one, this is probably a great uh, alternative to you guys. Okay? This is a side scroller beat em. If you guys aren't familiar with Double Dragon, it's, it's definitely classic. I'm going to push slow button. I'll show you what it does. Slow button, it just pause, 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 pause. You can see it, it works a little bit better than on Super Mario Bros. 3, but still it gets kind of annoying. The turbo buttons don't do anything on this game for some reason. But Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll have another uh, system review and review up shortly. Happy gaming, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.